Welcome to Holy Cross's pre-recorded worship for Sunday, February 28th, 2021. A word of thanks to Bill for being our assisting minister and Steve for being our musician, to Diane for being our reader, and to Ben for being our projectionist. And also a word of thanks to all of you for continuing to support Holy Cross's ministries. Donations are accepted through PayPal and pre-authorized remittance. Both of those can be accessed through our website, holycrossburlington.ca. And also we can take donations through Interact eTransfer if you send them to donations at holycrossburlington.ca. We can receive them there. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Christ Jesus. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Merciful God, you long for your people to bear the fruits of mercy and repentance. Tend and guide our growth into a faithful nation who serves you and the people you love. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. A reading from Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. 
At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Today's reading has three stories, and it's the last one that gets the greatest billing, Jesus' lament over Jerusalem. However, we need to understand the first two stories and how they fit into Luke's gospel to see more deeply the words of conflict that are directed towards Herod, or to see more deeply even the mother hen imagery that Jesus uses. We often want to hold on to the soft and pastoral side of Jesus, you know, the side that welcomed children into its ministry and extolled them as models of how one comes to receive God. However, today's reading seems to be in stark opposition to that type of imagery of Jesus. Repent or perish. That really doesn't leave much wiggle room. And it gets even tighter if we look back at the stories that are before this one, as they are about division and judgment. After the story of Repent and Perish, we move into the parable of the barren fig tree. We know that parables are supposed to teach us something about God's realm. So what is it that we are to learn about God's realm through this story? We hear this in verse 9. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. It's the ending of the parable about the barren fig tree. Are we to learn that God is just going to give us one more year? I certainly hope not. I've been alive for 52, a Christian for 45, ordained for 24, and the pastor of Holy Cross for 13 there are days, there are days that I don't bear much fruit in any of those areas. There are also days that I do. 
But if I've only got one more year to get it all right, well, that's not going to happen. I'm going to continue to have days that do not bear fruit, and days that will. Are we to learn who is who in this story? Are we to learn, as has been traditionally taught, that God is the man who planted the fig tree, and Jesus is the gardener who intercedes, and that we are the tree? Well, if that's the case, I really don't want Jesus bringing more manure into the roots of my existence. I can get into enough trouble and enough manure in my life on my own. We come to this last part of the reading with these unanswered questions. And somehow they're supposed to help us understand these harsh words to Herod and understand the mother hen imagery even more deeply. While we don't like it, Jesus makes demands on people. We saw that last week. We're to go out of our way to help others and to be generous with people who might be considered our enemies. We're to take up extra work if that means others are freed up to live out their call. Now, you could see that as unfair. And I'd say it's how life is when we understand community in the way that God does. It's not done to the extent that it's martyrdom and we parade how much we've given up or how generous we are or how much extra work we took on for someone else. It's about working together in community to allow the work of God to happen. And what is this work of God? Well, I think it gets expressed well in the middle of verse 34. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? How often? Not once. Not seven times. Not seven times seventy. How often? often. To me, that implies a continual longing on the part of Jesus, a continual longing on the part of our God to provide protection for us so that we can grow, so that we can develop. So yes, there is lament over Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is judged with some harsh words. However, all of that is to lead us to these verses of God's purpose. For us to be cultivated into bearing God's fruit in the world. Of protecting us so that we can grow and develop. For none of us gets it right every day. And our God is standing there, desiring to be with us, protecting us helping us show the world more clearly the image of God that is within us. And for that, we give thanks. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You give us endless chances to show your love in our lives, although we do not always take them. Open our hearts to see the world with the same compassion that you do, and treat others with the grace you have given us. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the Holy Land, and for reconciliation between its peoples. Soften hearts that have hardened, and forgive those who have succumbed to hatred. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Even amidst the curses of pollution, endangerment, and exploitation, this earth and its creatures continue to endure and thrive. Make us willing and dedicated partners committed to the renewal of our environment. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Disease and disaster are not punishments for sin, but rather reflections of a broken and imperfect world. Strengthen all who suffer in adversity of any kind and who need a special measure of your healing, especially Adele, Aiden, Alex, all healthcare workers, all in Halton and around the world living with COVID-19, Astor, Cal, Carol, Carolyn, Celeste, Colleen, Daniel M, Decima, Donna, Frida, Hedda, Ingo and Sandra, Irene and Brooke, Janice, Jerlene, Jesse, Larry, Laureen, Mark, Nancy, Natalie, Neil, Ray, Regini, Richard, Rose and Herman, the self-employed who are facing the stress of severely reduced income as the virus impacts their business. Shelley, the unemployed and underemployed. Valerie, and all whom we hold in our hearts. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We remember Linus Pauling and all scientists who use their gifts for the benefit of people and the advancement of peace upon the planet. Inspire us through his witness to discern where our own gifts are most needed. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Michael, our bishop, Susan, our national bishop, the Reverend Conrad Plummer, president of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Guyana, the Right Reverend Sani Ibrahim Azar, Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, and the Right Reverend Susan Bell, Bishop of the Diocese of Niagara. We also pray for Colin Cameron, pastor here at Holy Cross. 
May their ministries be signs of your compassion. We pray for Richard Hardwick and Diane and Lino Maya and their ministries through Holy Cross. May their faith and actions inspire us to treat others with the grace we see in their lives. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. We long to be fed with your grace in the holy meal, which is our renewal and life. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Our Tuesday and Thursday evening prayer sessions have returned through the season of Lent. At 7 p.m., you can go to worship.holycrossburlington.ca and the worship videos will be available there. Also, they're available by email. If you would like to subscribe to them, then please do email me, pastorcolin at holycrossburlington.ca, and I'll make sure that you're added to the list. Also, our, tu our Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday and Friday online Bible studies have returned. Those are available by email. And again, if you have not subscribed to them, then please do let me know, and I'll make sure you're added to the list. Last Wednesday, we had our first session with St. Elizabeth on The Seven Spiritual Gifts of Waiting by Holly Whitcomb. It's a book that Bishop Susan Bell of the Anglican Diocese of Niagara has recommended for us to read through the season of Lent. And so we're doing that and discussing it with members of St. Elizabeth, both as a way to study the book and as a way to get to know some people at St. Elizabeth's better. Uh, there were five of us from Holy Cross involved in, uh, in the discussion, and uh, roughly the same number from St. Elizabeth's. And so if you're interested in joining us, please do let me know. Um, I can make sure that you get the link and help you with resources around sourcing the book. Also, Bishop Bell recommended another book if you're not uh, interested in in joining the book study and discussing that one. Uh, this one is by Rowan Williams, and it's called The Way of St. Benedict. Uh, so you might want to pick that up and, uh, and read it through Lent as well. Next Sunday, we will have the story of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son on March the 7th. So please do Join us again at 10.30 for worship. Again, you can access it by going to worship.holycrossburlington.ca. On Friday, March the 5th, we will be streaming the service for the World Day of Prayer from the church in Vanuatu. Uh, I invite you to join us at 7 p.m. for that service. It is a video service um, that has been compiled because we're not able to gather like we would normally do uh, for the World Day of Prayer. So please do join us in that if you're able to. And finally, uh, Holy Cross's online coffee hour is at 11.15 every Sunday. It's available in the email uh, that you receive each Sunday about Sunday morning worship, there's a link there to go to a, a uh, an online meeting, and you might see some of those happy faces uh, 
uh, Jeff and Bill and Patty and Susan were in our session last Sunday, and uh, and I asked them if I could take their picture and uh, and post it. So who knows if you join this week, you may see uh, at least some of them. So we hope to see you at eleven fifteen at the online coffee hour. You demand faithfulness and not perfection, O oh God. May our offerings be true reflections of our gratitude for your gifts, and may they be blessed to benefit those who need them by the power of your Spirit. Amen. May the eternal God, whose glory is revealed as a crucified and risen God, be with you. May God's abundant love and care nourish and strengthen you, and the blessing of God the source of all being, the eternal word, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. peace, share the good news, the peace of Christ be with you always.